Welcome back guys. So following up from my previous video about what your boss can see you do in Microsoft Teams and Microsoft 365, which you can catch up here or up here. I thought I might actually make a video about what your boss can actually see you doing on your computer. So a lot of people have been working from home for the past couple of years, we don't need to get into that. A lot of people have been working from home and it looks like a lot of people are going to continue working from home. So it's good to know what your boss can actually see you doing on your computer, what they can track, what they have visibility of, what they can stop you from doing and what they can just generally monitor. Before we get into it, if you are enjoying these videos, if you're getting some sort of value, whether it's technical value or whether you're just generally interested, please smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. I'm trying to release at least two or three videos a week about general IT topics, including cloud and on-premises stuff and what we do as IT consultants. So if you're interested, again, smash the subscribe button. So the initial question is, can my boss actually see what I'm doing when I'm working from home, when I'm working remotely, when I'm using my work PC from home? And the answer is maybe. So I can't give you a yes or no answer, but I can help you sort of understand what they can possibly track. And maybe I can show you a few pointers on how to check if they are tracking. Keep in mind before we get into this, if your organization is tracking what you're doing and they are actually actively looking at what the staff are doing, then this should be stipulated in the IT policy. And you should just generally be able to ask an IT administrator or your boss or your manager, or whoever you report to. So keep that in mind because you should already be able to get this information from your IT policy. You should have one. If you don't, you should ask for one but let's get into it either way so let's go through a few things that commonly people think are getting tracked and let's just sort of debunk those straight away so things like mic and webcam probably not probably not actually looking at any of that type of stuff it's just way too much data there's way too many privacy concerns it's generally just not worth it so Straight away, I can tell you that it's very, very unlikely that your boss is looking at your webcam or looking at you through your webcam or listening to you through your mic. There's not really any enterprise type software that allows you to do that anyway. If they are doing it, it's probably illegal wherever you're from and I would be more worried about other things if that was the situation. So let's park those. What generally companies like to track is things like what applications you're using and what internet traffic you're visiting. So those are two very commonly tracked things. So we can actually do that with a variety of different enterprise applications and a variety of different types of tools. And generally it's the same type of tools we use to block people from going to certain websites or using certain applications. Those tools can usually provide some sort of tracking and let IT administrators and managers know what's being used and where it's being used from and if there's attempts to go to certain different websites and if there's attempts to use certain different applications. So let's go through some of the ways that that can actually be done. The easiest way and probably the way that most people know is VPNs. So a lot of organizations, when they are actually working from home, they are connecting to their corporate network via a VPN. So before you log in in the morning or sometimes even automatically, your VPN will turn on and it will just connect to the corporate network. Now, that is generally not to track what you're doing. That is so that you can access resources on the corporate or the enterprise network. So maybe you have an instance of Exchange, Microsoft Exchange, or maybe you have some sort of payroll software that you need to access on the network. That's why VPN access is usually provided. There is, there is the chance that your IT team is actually tunneling all your internet traffic through the corporate network. This was common practice a while ago. Sort of lots of companies have moved away from that because it's just too much traffic and there's too much latency. So it slows down employees' internet experience as well because you're tunneling all that traffic over the VPN. So let's say you go to google.com, that traffic actually doesn't come from your service provider at home. It comes from the service provider that is serving your business or your organization's internet. There is something else called split tunneling. Split tunneling is when we actually have two tunnels, one for all your corporate traffic. So all of your data that you're accessing from the payroll software or from Microsoft Exchange on-prem, that is actually coming down the VPN. But when you're going to private internet or public internet addresses that aren't in your private domain, then you are going over your own internet. It's a very easy way to test this. It's just to check what your IP is. So if you go to google.com and you type in what is my IP, 
you can actually just have a look at what your IP address is. It should match your service provider. And the clearest way to actually work that out is maybe if you go to somewhere where there's no VPN, so use your mobile phone, go to what is my IP, make sure you're on the Wi-Fi at home, do what is my IP and compare it to what your computer is when you're connected to the VPN. If they're the same, then it's very unlikely that your traffic is getting monitored via that means. Keep in mind that the VPNs provided by your organization are usually encrypted. That doesn't mean that they can't access that traffic because they may be actually replacing those certificates so that they can capture that traffic and inspect it. That's pretty common. If they are actually capturing the data, there's no point capturing data that you can't see. You need to be able to decrypt that data. So you generally, your computer will have like a firewall certificate on it that your organization has the keys to and they can actually decrypt that traffic to inspect the packet. Before we move away from internet traffic, even if you're not using VPN, keep in mind that it's still possible to track you using other means. So just because you're not using a VPN and tunneling all your traffic down, that doesn't mean that there isn't some sort of application on your actual device that is monitoring the traffic you're visiting and sending it back to a repository, a log repository or something like that. Something like CrowdStrike or Zscaler or I think Cloud App Security from Microsoft can actually do that. So it can actually capture all that traffic from the end user's machine, so from your workstation, and put it in a repository for review later. So don't think if you don't have some sort of VPN, then you're in the clear because there's still plenty of other ways we can capture that data. Easiest way to check, again, is to ask your organization, but if you look in your taskbar, you should see some sort of remnants of something. So Zscaler, CrowdStrike, or maybe something that might stand out to you. So have a look and see what things are running. So there's lots of different ways, lots of different applications that can track your use. So have a look in your taskbar, have a look in your services if you can. And if you are really in doubt, then just ask. Application security, this is the type of thing that might stop you from installing certain applications. A lot of the time, organizations like to restrict the applications you can have on your operating system. That is because a lot of applications can conflict and they wanna make sure that their line of business applications are the most important ones. When I first started in IT, it was very common to actually have an allowed list and only those applications are allowed on that operating system. Now it's actually more of the other way. So we have a restricted list because there's just too many applications you need to put on the allowed list. So we instead use a disallowed list or a denied list. So we restrict the applications that we don't want running. And very commonly, some of the ones off the top of my head, maybe one of the best examples of that is Tor. I see a lot of uh, organizations blocking Tor from being installed on people's machines. The way we do that is generally with those same sort of tools that might also capture internet traffic. So things like Cloud App Security, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, I think there's a few other ones, a few other MDMs, basically anything that can manage your device and make sure that you're compliant with a lot of different policies can also restrict the applications you can use. Now that we've got that all sort of cleared up as much as I can, how are some of the ways that you can check? Let's quickly go through them again. The first way is to look in your taskbar, look for anything that might be tracking your traffic or maybe restricting you from running certain applications. If you just click in your taskbar, usually you'll see some sort of agent running there. If not, you can check your services if you know how. And if you still are not really quite sure, again, just ask your IT admin. It's all in the IT admin policy and you should be able to get that information very easily from the organization you're working for. So if you are still worried about your internet traffic getting routed over the VPN, then again, just use the what is my IP trick. I explained it a few minutes ago and that'll help you identify that too. What I'll end with is that if it's a corporate machine, then just expect that everything you're doing on there is being monitored and being tracked. I already explained in my previous video how we can track Exchange, your mail, your Microsoft Teams, your SharePoint, all that sort of data. So just keep that in mind. If you're using a corporate machine, just keep all the data corporate. Don't do anything cheeky on there. And if you're using a BYOD machine, then make sure you're not installing any of those agents and make sure that you are not actually enrolling in any sort of MDM software. Because if it's your machine, then you're gonna treat it like it's your machine. So try not to unless you really have to. All right, I hope that clears it up a bit. I really suggest that you guys keep all your personal stuff off your corporate machines. But if you do wanna hear more, then let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.